but it's always a challenge for us to decide you know, who to bring on stage, who to speak, um, because they're gatekeepers to their respective markets. And while being a collection of 15 markets from across the region, uh, they're not all necessarily the same. We can learn a little bit from many uh, different examples, many different markets. So we decided to create a panel and bring forward three distinguished gentlemen, right honorable gentlemen, uh, from three great markets. Uh, I'm going to ask them to do their own introductions, if you would, please. But uh, Shubash, Igor, and Lee, if you'll join me on stage. Hold the applause for the end. Um, these uh, are uh, opinionated, uh, experienced men. Uh, if you agree, if you disagree, if you want to confirm, if you want to uh, challenge anything you hear from them, this session belongs to you as much as it belongs to us. <laughs> Welcome to you three gentlemen. Uh, you're known to many people here. Uh, certainly you're known uh, in your markets, but uh, I want to give you, uh, by way of an introduction, an opportunity for you to talk a little bit more about uh, your name, position, company, uh, put in context uh, what you do. Uh, we'll start to uh, Igor, if you would, please. Um, hi, my name is Igor. I'm CEO of uh, Lazada Malaysia. Lazada is an uh, online uh, retailer. We are uh, based in five countries and we belong to a group that is called Rocket Internet. Rocket Internet is a global venture fund that's uh, operating e-commerce retailers across the globe. Roughly 3 billion euros raised uh, over time, 50 ventures. Um, in uh, Southeast Asia we have two large ventures. One is Lazada and the second one is Zalora. Uh, Lazada is a multi-category retailer and Zalora is uh, fashion only. Uh, focusing on Lazada, we are present in five countries, which are Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam. Uh, we launched it uh, uh, 18 months ago, roughly. We have uh, 1,200 people on the ground, and we are an integrated uh, player. Integrated player means that we have our own warehouse, our own logistics, uh, we have our own customer service, marketing, buying, like any normal retailer. And on top of that, we buy the products, and we have also marketplace model. So far the business is going very well. We have a uh, dominant position in, most, in all the countries in terms of uh, uh, online player. And um, nice to meet you. Thank you, Igor. Lee, you have a minute. Sure. I'm Lee Scott. I'm from a company called Leading Edge Group based in Sydney, Australia. Uh, we work with about 1,200 independent retailers around Australia um, and New Zealand and also in the UK. Um, we uh, have 10 different verticals in Leading Edge Group. Uh, my role as Group Merchandise Manager, I look after the vendor relationships for the Computer Group, Consumer Electronics Group, uh, we have an Appliance Group, uh, Photographic Group, so Photo Specialty, and we partner with Kodak Express uh, in Australia, and also a Auto Electricians Group. The group also has uh, books, music, video, jewellery divisions, and we also have a large part of our business, which is Telco, so we run uh, Leading Edge Telecoms business in Australia. We partner with uh, Telecom New Zealand uh, in a New Zealand operation and British Telecom in the, uh, in the UK. Uh, been in the industry for 28 years. Um, started with uh, Mass Merchant, Dick Smith Electronics, which some of you may know in Australia. Uh, spent uh, nearly 20 years with them and then moved over to Leading Edge. Thank you. It's your Good morning, everyone. I'm Subhash Chandra. I'm from uh, Bangalore, south of India. Sangeeta is a chain of mobile phone showrooms having 250 showrooms spread across South India. Just expanded into Delhi, the capital of the country. Uh, we are a 40 year old uh, organization, started with music, started selling gramophone records. So we have moved with times and moved with technology and uh, we are the oldest mobile phone retailer in the country. India went mobile uh, retailing about 17 years ago. So we were the first retailer and we now have 250 showrooms uh, selling about 100,000 phones every month. Uh, with a good, with better than three times the uh, market average uh, price of the country. Thank you. And uh, before I get started with the first question, I just want to make clear, uh, again, the session is open to you. Alicia has a microphone in the back, so if you want to make a comment, if you want to confirm, if you want to question, uh, uh, probe a little bit deeper, just raise your hand and she'll bring the microphone to you. Uh, as I mentioned, the point of this session, 
up until this point, the, the communication has been really in one direction. We've heard a lot from vendors. Uh, we've heard about their strategy, their roadmap, their vision for the future. But you gentlemen, if I were to give you 10, 15 minutes on the stage, and I were to ask from your point of view, you know, in your markets, close to the customer, what would you communicate back to the vendor that you think they're missing today in their understanding of the opportunity, their understanding of the changes in the marketplace? And, and I open this question to any or all of you. Can I? No, please. Well, it's a, it's, it's a broad question, and uh, I, I told you uh, I would only give you 15 minutes. You could probably talk to the vendors for hours. Uh, but uh, what, what would be the message that you'd want to give back to them? Well, uh, coming from the country, India, uh, and uh, with a 1.3 billion population with, uh, uh, you know, massive numbers uh, selling monthly, uh, in fact, uh, in, in crores, I can offline uh, tell you, please convert it into millions, it's 160 lakh phones uh, get sold every month in the country. Uh, I, I need to convert it into millions, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, with such huge numbers, this after sales service is not up to the mark in the country. So, so that's where I guess there's a lot to do by the way. After sales service is uh, a key area we yeah. need to develop in connection with our vendor partners. Lee yeah. Igor, what would your message be uh, you know, back to you know, a vendor who has this great, clear vision for the future but yeah. doesn't necessarily understand the practical reality of what it's like to face the customer every day? Yeah, so for, for our business um, dealing with independent retailers, one of the challenges we have is the, the mass merchants. So the major brands having a dominant play in Australia. We have majority of our stores are in regional and rural locations around Australia, so um, it's, I guess the message would be the importance of um, specialists, um, the importance of um, small business, um, and the part they play in representing their products uh, to the consumer, and not underestimating that specialty channel uh, in favour of just volume through mass merchants. It's an important message. On our side... Uh, uh, well, the other, the, let's say, the new channel of the market, and we often see um, rather uh, underestimation of the potential of the channel or uh, uh, not uh, we lack of resources allocated to it. So often when we go into negotiation with our suppliers, we have roughly 500 per country, uh, we see we are treated like a normal uh, offline retailer. In reality, commerce has its own rule, has its own rule, it has its own needs, uh, and uh, it's uh, and this is, uh, this is not taken into consideration so far. And therefore, uh, the overall uh, growth of the channel is uh, 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 slowed down. But nevertheless, uh, so it's, it's a bit hampered. But on the other side, uh, the, um, the opportunity of the market is enormous. We are growing very, very fast. Well, very fast means more than 20% month on month without any seasonality, without any post chains New Year, without, without any Ramadan. Uh, without any uh, deeper value, we are just growing. And uh, uh, the, the response and the support from the uh, suppliers in adapting to our business model is still a bit uh, limited. What does it mean adapting? Adapting to us means that uh, you, the, the, the way you supply the e-commerce retailer is a bit different. Uh, you have to increase the frequency of the, of the orders uh, and uh, the frequency of the deliveries. So we are not uh, replenishing once a month, but we are replenishing potentially four or five times a month. Um, the way uh, the, the products, the, 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 it's not only about supplying goods, but also to, to, uh, to learn how to position your products on the e-commerce platform. And the, most of our suppliers are not ready to do us, so they're giving us a product and then figure it out the content. And this is actually a mistake when you're only giving the product, because then uh, the retailer, it's a multi-category retailer that has, I don't know, 30, 50,000 SKU, 50,000 50, SKU, is putting the product on the website and is doing its best in terms of uh, doing the product description positioning. And the output often might be wrong. And uh, it's a big mistake for the vendor to let us do it and figure it out. Because at the end, when you have a website, you start to have 100,000, 200,000 visitors a day. The schedule that you're putting, putting on the product is seen as often as in your stores. And then you might have a as an output, a wrong positioning or a wrong, wrong, wrong perception of the product in a very, very fast. 
If there's another retailer in the room who wanted to add uh, their own message, uh, just raise your hand, we'll bring the microphone to you. Uh, it's interesting, we hear uh, three different messages. Uh, okay, I have one more important message for all the only brands. One. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> for the time being. Uh, one very important burning issue right now, which is, uh, which I understand as I, uh, you know, uh, share my thoughts with various friends and getting to know various people in this forum of the street. Uh, that is the conflict between the online and the offline stores. It's a really big conflict and it's happening across the globe is what I understand. And uh, the online guys, at least in India, have a different set of rules. The offline guys have a different set of rules. I'm not supposed to undercut, but the online guys have a free ball. So, in fact, I know my buying prices are better than my online friends. And my size allows me to you know, compete with them head on, but I'm not allowed to. So why this? Why this two dual policy for online and offline? I have a friend here on the... <laughs> this is why we put Lee in the center. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we uh, actually, when uh, what we, we have also a second business model, which is marketplace. And uh, marketplace means that we have the opportunity both to distributors and retailers to go online. So we are approaching uh, region-wide large retailers and offering the, the opportunity to put their own store, their, we call it shopping shop, on our, uh, on our website. So I'm frequently meeting uh, uh, leaders and CEO of large retailers and this is showing them why don't you want to do your shopping shop like www.yourstore at lazada.com. Uh, so first of all, we are offering to everybody the opportunity to join our platform and uh, leverage our logistic. <coughs> our logistic means that you can do cash on delivery. Don't complain, come join us. Exactly, <laughs> join us. <laughs> so joining us means that uh, you, can, uh, you can you start to advertise your banner, first of all, and then your products <coughs> with your pricing and your content on a platform that gives two things. A, a super high exposure which means that uh, when you have a promo, everybody sees it, and everybody means 300,000 people again. Second, we can deliver your product where you don't have your products, meaning that we do cash on delivery region-wide. We reach 600 million people, and we can collect cash. In the urban centers, we are close to do now same-day delivery, and in the most remote islands of the Philippines, we are doing it within two and a half, three days. Three more days. And, um, it's a channel that cannot be ignored, and we are not there to do price competition. We are there to give a different service to the customer. Again, we are there to do business. It's uh, interesting to hear both sides, and, and maybe we'll ask Lee to be the referee, or we'll put it out to the audience. But the, the, the fundamental question is, online and physical channels, do they necessarily always have to be competitive? Or can they in some way be cooperative? Can they be complementary? Uh, I, I knew you have an opinion on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I love, I think, the complimentary. I think uh, e-commerce, retailers are uh, here. It's not new. It's not going to go away. Most bricks and mortars retailers have an e-commerce platform. Some of them do it poorly. Some of them do it well. Um, I think they go hand in hand. Um, e-tailers, um, this type of business, is just another retail competitor, whether or not they've got a physical location or not. Uh, the challenges are for a, a, a bricks and mortar retailer is to give the customer a reason to go into the shop, give them an experience, um, make sure that they get uh, quality service, they can physically touch the product, which you can't do as a, an e-commerce player, um, and, uh, and make sure the customer's got a reason to buy. So I think they're complementary, they work side by side, they're always going to be there, um, and there should be enough room for everybody, um, as long as it's on an, an even playing field, as long as there's an opportunity for bricks and mortar retailers to compete with e-commerce, uh, given that they've usually got a higher infrastructure cost. And the question of the playing field, what is the message you would, you would get back to vendors in that situation? I can't see so well, so please uh, stand up or, or raise your hand uh, if you have a comment to make. Alicia, with the microphone, if you would just uh, walk to whoever wants to make a comment. But yeah, look, I'm an even playing field. Uh, for vendors, it's again, with a bricks and mortar retailer, there's costs associated for opening the store. You've got You've got the, the rent, you've got your electricity, you've got your staff, you've got your, your marketing, and all the other costs that go around running the shop, as well as actually having the inventory there. For the vendors, they need to have a channel strategy or a pricing strategy that lines up for bricks and mortar retailers, but also for uh, e-tailers as well. And for an even playing field, it's making sure that 
uh, as a, an independent retailer that you can compete with mass merchants um, and that bricks and mortar retailers are competing against e-commerce. And there's not too many vendors out there that have a very defined pricing strategy for uh, e-commerce versus bricks and mortar or even between mass merchant and small independents. And uh, there's a few that have got it right lately, but it's been a real challenge. Uh, I would like to add that over the years, uh, at least in India, there has, there has been a clear uh, demarcation and the business has evolved and the margin structure is different for, from the general trade and the uh, other trade, which is the LFR or the model trade, what we call it as. But, uh, you know, this, this is a real hot burning issue of online versus offline in the country today. And, uh, you know, uh, the marketplace is, is a sort of a garb uh, where the online retailers are using the marketplace, at least in India, I would like to, uh, you know, restrict myself uh, where I know the best as to what is happening. Uh, so, under the garb of the marketplace, they are able to get away discounting the product, saying that I don't have a control and it's a retailer doing it. Uh, <clears throat> the question that I have, I pose to my brands is, Sangeeta is a household name in our part of the country and if I were to offer my store, the customer walks into Sangeeta because of the trust that we have created over the last four decades. And if I were to offer my store to other mom and pop retailers, just like the marketplace model on the online, in the physical retail if I were to offer, would they accept it if they undercut? Which I don't, I have an answer saying absolutely not allowed. So then how then is the marketplace being allowed on the online? So unless and until the brands come with a clear strategy that online versus offline, you cannot go below the dealer billing price at least, if not the ma maximum retail price. You can't sell below the dealer billing price. There should be a policy, there should be a standard policy. It's very, very important. It, it can't be predatory pricing. It can't be one guy against the rest of them. Thank you. Any thoughts, any feedback, any comments, questions? Generally, it takes one or two people in the audience to really get the conversation going, and I, I don't want to uh, go back on the promise that this session belongs to you. We have a, a hand up here. Uh, if you would identify yourself uh, first, uh, name, company, country, and then your comment. My name is uh, Sayyid Nasir Usman. I represent uh, my company, Advanced Business Systems. We are a distributor in Pakistan for uh, multiple products of hardware like Acer, Dell, HP, Microsoft as well. Um, I have noticed that, uh, and my experience, uh, what I am observing in the market, that retailer could be retailer as well. And I have seen that in power retailers as well, that they are doing e-commerce e, uh, e as well, apart from retail physical retail. Uh, my question from uh, to Igor, like, uh, how do you see uh, moving forward shopping, uh, I mean, like uh, you were discussing an idea of opening a mall into uh, to the, uh, in, through internet and everyone can open the shop into that mall, isn't it? So how do you see moving forward because, uh, <coughs> I mean, like the competition and uh, offering uh, same products by different stores, how, uh, what would be the significant uh, on it? Thank you for the question. And uh, Igor? So, um, there's, uh, yes, um, I think that it's, it's worth to do a, a bit of um, classification of the website that you can have and, uh, and play. So, uh, also building on uh, what was said before, uh, first of all, in terms of evolution on what happened into the, um, into more mature markets of e-commerce. First, you start with the websites, which are those that are more under the spotlight because they are extremely price aggressive. And then you move progressively to players like us that are multi-category that are not the focus. And, uh, and, uh, but still are worth price at the point. And then at a certain point, e-commerce becomes a place where you have, uh, where customers come for convenience and uh, not, uh, not for pricing. Um, so, first of all, we are not a deal website, we are the second wave uh, of this. Then into the market you have uh, a pure e-commerce player, like deal website and uh, multi-category partner stores like us. And then you have independently run websites, and which are, uh, I don't know, a large retailer that wants to do his uh, uh, online store as well, 
or uh, the, uh, the small uh, the local web shop that opens this web shop. So the main difference between the two, between uh, the hybrid ones and, uh, and us, or people like us, is the problem. Uh, meaning that uh, when you, when a, a large retailer or a, a large brand decides to open a shopping shop into a mall, it's like opening a, 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 a a store into a large mall, in the largest mall in the city, where everybody's going and therefore everybody's passing in front of it in the city. Um, and it's benefiting from all the market investments that we are doing. So we have uh, only for, uh, for Southeast Asia, we have a team of 100 people that is doing online marketing every day. Uh, most uh, offline players will not invest in such a, such a force, such, such resources, because it doesn't fit their PNL. This is our core business, so we are doing it. There are some players into the market in Malaysia and across the region that uh, are going for an hybrid model, which is uh, I have my offline store and then I open my independent store, which is called uh, www.banner.com. And uh, it, uh, what you see it happens to things. When, number one, of the record you hear that in reality they're not selling much. And they're not selling much, uh, not because their products are bad or, uh, first of all, it's because they don't have traffic, because they didn't invest in marketing. And second, because they are not specialist on specialized online players. This means that they don't have their own fleet, uh, they don't have uh, our customer service, they don't have an infra the infrastructure that we have. And the website is also borderline. And the second one is that they don't have traffic. So, um, yes, there's nothing wrong in doing a, an hybrid mall, but typically it's better to go on, uh, uh, to go on, uh, on, a, multi on a department store like us. And you see it in, uh, in China, which is a much more advanced market than ours. You see what's happening on Tmall. Tmall is a pure marketplace. It's a huge success. Uh, they were doing, uh, um, yesterday they had 11.11. That was on Monday. They had 11.11 and they had in half day 500 million sales in the first half of the day. And it is all uh, mono brands whether they are retailers or brands that are advertising on that one. If you go, I'm pretty sure that the www.nike.china that they didn't sell as much as Nike as Tmall.china. If you look on the, it's, it's crazy, if you take uh, many e-commerce customers of China, when you ask them, uh, let's buy something on Nike, they don't go on Nike.com, they go on Nike at Tmall.com. It's an interesting point. I had um, a question I wanted to put to the audience, which is uh, very much related to the topic. That's question number two, Frank. <coughs> what type of retail operation is best positioned to deliver sales growth and increased profitability at present? Is it traditional brick and mortar? Is it multi-channel? Or is it pure play e-tail? I'm curious to know what you think. Press one, two, or three. Frank? So question two, what do you think? Your expectation for the results? Best position, deliver sales growth, increase profitability. Igor, I think I know what you would answer. In reality, I'm a big fan of multi-channel. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean by multi-channel? Is it multi-product? Uh, what exactly do you mean by product? It's, it's retail operation, meaning it's, it's a, a combination online and physical. Okay. okay. Uh, well, as my friend here mentioned, uh, for the offline uh, store guy, it's uh, very difficult. It's a different ball game to put all his energy and focus on the online. So there are two different specialty and core areas. So uh, it's generally very difficult to find one guy who's a specialist in both. And we also have an online uh, presence, but yes, we are not doing great numbers. We, we have. Uh, we have good traffic, but not very little conversions. And uh, today in the world, online space is being looked at more of a valuation game to be able to raise huge money. Uh, you may not be able to make profits, but definitely your valuation is going to be very, very big. But a pure play brick and mortar guy, end of the day, he would have made profit. All Sangeeta stores, 250 stores are profitable. From the day one, within three months, in fact, many, many people ask me, how long do you take 
for one store to break even. It's anything between three to five months, as low as three to five months. Maybe it's not the same across for everybody. Maybe because Sangeeta is an established brand in, in the geography that we are present. But, so what I mean is brick and mortar can see profits by the end of the day or end of the month. Online is a long haul game, but a big game. I don't think any of you are surprised by the results of the audience. Uh, any comments, questions? I want to open it up one more time. One last time. Raise your hand. Yeah, Graham's got a question. Probably if you will, uh, your name, uh, company. Yeah. Graham Deer from Leading Edge Computers. Your, your prejudice, your relationship to the, the gentleman on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my, my question is probably for all three of the panellists. Um, we've heard some debate, which is great, about e-tailing versus bricks and mortar versus multi-channel. But we are seeing an emergence of vendors selling direct. Um, we've got Apple started the trend. We've now got Microsoft copying it. In Australia, we've had Acer set up their own kiosk stores. You have Lenovo with an ultra price competitive e-commerce <coughs> trade happening. Uh, yesterday we learned HP has opened 500 outlets. So where does this fit within the emerging landscape for selling to consumers and businesses for our e-tailing friends and our traditional bricks and mortar friends? It's a great question. Our vendor partners are they in fact undercutting the channel? It's like the mother killing its own child. <laughs> That's a, a dramatic description, but uh, <laughs> your position is quite clear. <laughs> Say nothing more. So, 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 so how do you plan on dealing with it in your market? It mightn't be there now, but obviously you watch worldwide trends and it'll only be time before it happens in, in your market. I should, I, I guess the, the message should be given back loud and clear, ASAP. I, I don't think anyone, any brand in, uh, in India does it and I don't think uh, especially in India it's called a nation of retailers India is a nation of retailers every other world is full of retail so I don't think it will ever happen in India but any part of the world wherever it happens it's absolutely condemnable and it has to be stopped at once and that's uh, quite clear <laughs> there's no nuance there's nothing abstract about that response uh, Igor, your thoughts on the on the comment, the questions? And, um, so for uh, for e-commerce, the the challenge of it is that uh, a brand can deliver better content and uh, <coughs> for sure a better assortment than uh, an e-tailer. Uh, on the other side, it will still miss the the factor everything in one place. So if I want to buy my laptop or uh, my tablet and I want to go through the website, I will have to go on the Lenovo website, the Apple website, the Acer website, and then after 20 minutes I'm going to get really nervous because I'm flipping the web pages, I cannot find the compare the specs, etc. If the <laughs> department store's platform is well done, I can do it uh, fairly, fairly rapidly and faster. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a fact you have to consider it. Uh, but it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, I see it more as a communication channel for, uh, at the beginning, as a marketing channel than as a service. So I buy, uh, I, look, I go on the website of uh, Apple, uh, Acer, etc., and see, I, I read about the product, uh, but then most probably I might end up doing the call either on bricks and mortar or on e-tailer, because on top of uh, having a nice description, on my website, I, you can pay on installments, you can pay cash on delivery, you can pay PayPal. I can deliver by night. In, in Kuala Lumpur, we are starting to do night delivery or same day delivery. There is, uh, you can get points that you can redeem with other purchases. So there are many other services that uh, a global brand cannot implement in the short term across uh, all the countries in the world. That's an interesting point. Uh, I've heard many comments that uh, Microsoft's uh, retail outlets are in fact just about the, the communication channel, uh, recognizing that with the complexity around the launch of Windows 8, the radical redesign, the fact that there's new form factor with Surface, that they really needed to control that message. And the only way they could do that is by standing directly in front of the customer themselves. 
So it's not so much a long-term commitment in going direct as it is saying we have a problem and we have to address it immediately. So as long as they maintain the price, yeah. it's, it's fine. Okay. Don't, don't be fooled. Microsoft's going to Yeah. Well, Microsoft is a, a specific example, uh, but I, I think uh, you're right. Others, there's uh, a huge competitive issue here. Yeah, so don't be fooled. Microsoft is selling to retail customers, so um, we spent quite a bit of time in Microsoft stores and had a look at them. Um, the one good thing about them, it is more about the experience, um, and they normally are at a recommended retail price, so, which is fine. Um, I'm interested to hear what Graham's response to this. As, guys, he's my general manager, he's one of my bosses here, so as he asks the question, I'm sure he's got an answer to it, so if you want to throw back to Graham to give me the answer. As you know, Lee, there is no, no easy answer on it. Um, I, I raise it as a challenge to everyone because I think uh, whilst the debate was, was centred around e-commerce versus bricks and mortar, I wanted to introduce a third player into it's the another equation. another layer of complexity on top of Yeah, general. another layer of complexity. Yeah. Uh, there, there is no clear answer at the moment. It's an evolving problem that we all face. Um, yes, you're right uh, in, in, in what you've said about um, um, yeah, the, selling the solution, having a range of options for a customer and, and doing all of that. Um, there will always be those customers that are brand shopping either brand specific or price specific, um, and, and that's where those 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 businesses are uh, are going to target. I think one of the things clear is that vendors are going to have retail presence, whether it's an e-commerce or a bricks and mortar site. I think I think it is. Whether or not all of them are successful or not, um, in Australia at the moment, Canon's e-commerce sort of very aggressive. Uh, their pricing is cheaper than retail. They offer free freight next day delivery, gift with purchase, and a whole range of things. So that's really eating into particularly photographic specialty um, retail stores. Um, you've got Apple that um, do their online um, play, which you can get uh, faster delivery than if you're a tier two retailer. So if you're not one of the big boys, you can get it faster ordering it off the website. You can get it personalized, you can get it engraved. Um, so as a gifting uh, process, it's good. Uh, luckily, we don't have a Microsoft store in Australia yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. Um, they'll open one up. Um, and uh, yeah, HP was a real eye when you said that HP have got store within store and stores around Australia, uh, stores around the world because we haven't seen that yet. And it will happen. I have no doubt that HP will open the store. I think it's almost though as vendors do it as an experience to show the brand, show the, the, uh, the product, and they don't compete against us. If they charge for freight, if they do full retail price um, and they offer value, and if they do recommendations back to um, bricks and mortar retailers, I think that's good. Um, but if they go out there and, and cut us to pieces, it's, it's well, bad. To, it's, it's not good. It's back to the passive point. Uh, Absolutely. If, if you're undercut on price, then it becomes strictly competitive. But there is an opportunity to be cooperative, uh, complementary. What I would like to add is, as an offline retailer, Sangeeta, uh, we value add a lot. Uh, see, because uh, the phone, the, I went to the phone business, Samsung, Apple, Nokia, Sony, etc. Uh, there's not much to differentiate apart from the experience of touch and feel, apart from the quality of the sales guy behind the counter, and uh, uh, how do you compete with the online? How do you compete with the brand that stores if it were to happen, like how you mentioned in India? See, what currently we do is uh, we at Sangeeta, every phone that is sold out of Sangeeta is insured against theft, against liquid damage against physical damage. I pay a huge premium and it's not an optional insurance. Every phone that I sell, the entire turnover is insured. So because of which, in, in, in India, in fact, insurance is generally not trusted at all. It's a one-way traffic. They collect the premium, they don't sell your claims. We have rewritten that story. We settle the claims in seven days flat. and. We honor the claims. We don't ask the customer to go to the insurance company. That's one value add that we have brought in for the, you know, and we have evolved and improved over the years. The second value add that we have brought in is every phone, every smartphone that is bought from Sangeeta comes with a door pick up and drop service. If there were to be a problem in the next 365 days, across six cities, six major cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Hyderabad, Bangalore, wherever you're traveling, whether on business or official, uh, or personal. You know, if you have a problem, you just call us and my guy is there two hours from your call with a standby phone delivered, handset picked up, delivered at the service center and dropped back to you either at the city in which you have given it to him or at your base home, home center. 
So this is a value add that we have, uh, you know, and both these value adds have not been able to be copied by anyone. It's almost next to impossible, and uh, both have been on for more than four years. In fact, we have been awarded as the best retailer for excellence in customer service because of these initiatives. Over and above these things, we also offered EMI. EMI today is a default hygiene in India on mobile phones. But we launched, we were the first ones in the country to launch it way back in 1997. So we not only have EMI on credit for credit card holders, but we have EMI for non-credit card holders also through a finance company. So these are the value additions, how you could still differentiate and fight the online, fight the brand stores if they were to be. I think, I think they're really powerful examples too. It goes back to this question of, you talk about customer service, but it's really a customer experience or, or you know, customer trust, customer uh, uh, connection, building a community around the store. Uh, and, and that's uh, something uh, brick and mortar is uniquely positioned to do. We're running a bit short on time, uh, but I always think it's important to conclude with a hopeful message. <laughs> uh, I want to give you an opportunity just in closing um, the question I always like is, okay, sort of suspend conventional rules, suspend disbelief. I give you each a magic wand. If you could make one concrete, specific change in the channel, particularly in relation to the, the, the links and, and the messages you want to pass to vendors, you could make one change, you have the power to do one thing in the channel to drive better business for yourself, but for all of us, what would it be? I'll start with uh, Igor. Yeah. What I said at the beginning for me, it's uh, vendors and partners that uh, understand and uh, and see how e-commerce is going to be in two years from now, three years from now. They visualize immediately now and they start uh, collaborating and in line with it. So it's not as convincing them, despite we already have a very strong track record and we demonstrated it in, uh, across the entire region that we would have a mindset across the board of people that already see what's going to be e-commerce and that would simplify a lot. To, to really get a clear picture of the unique needs, but then the unique opportunity that the online channel represents. Yes. Great. Thank you. Lee, you've got the, the magic wand. You can make one big sweeping change. What would you do? Um, again, something I mentioned earlier would be just the equality. Make sure that there's a, a clear pricing strategy that mass merchant versus uh, independent retailers, but also e-commerce versus bricks and mortar. Just make sure that each vendor, all vendors, had a clear channel pricing strategy that was fair and reasonable. Again, not uh, driving price competition, but finding a way to all be uh, complementary and, and yeah, cooperative. Well, uh, e-commerce is here to stay and uh, not only to stay, but to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to be the next big thing. We are all into it. Uh, you know, uh, it's okay. just that we, we, it's just that the brands the have to have a level <laughs> playing field, and uh, as long as that is done, and uh, you know, generally. At least the brands that I'm dealing with in India, uh, there are quite a lot of good things from the brands as well. So it doesn't mean that uh, because we have not touched on any good things that the brands have done, it doesn't mean that uh, everything is bad. And how do you feel about the vendor-owned stores again? <laughs> That's quite clear. I want to thank you three gentlemen. I know you have uh, a loaded schedule with one-on-one -on -one meetings. We have to let you go and uh, the rest of the audience too. We go back to the uh, exhibition area for continuation of uh, the meeting schedule and the plan. Uh, I will see you again later for uh, the gala dinner tonight. Uh, so uh, we're going to make a little change here. We'll come back with round tables with a little bit of entertainment. Uh, we have an award ceremony, so I'll see you back here. Uh, gentlemen, uh, just uh, an opportunity to say thank you one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.